Hey guys and welcome to Slash Rex Games. So while I was putting together this slow mo tutorial, I uh, created this Gatling gun mob character. Looks pretty cool. And while I was doing that, I added blood splatter effects to that tutorial. And I thought it would probably be better if I just uh, did a separate tutorial on that alone and then incorporate it later. So here we've got two mob characters. They have mini guns. They are shooting a lot of bullets, and they've got the little shell casings splitting out there. If you want to know how to do that, feel free to check the description for a link, or you can click the banner that's on there right now. So Basically, they're just doing their own thing, shooting in random directions. I'm coming in from the bottom of the screen, and if I connect with one of these bullets, it's going to create a blood splatter. So let's go. Oh, that looks terrible. That's gory. I've lost a lot of blood. It only happens when I touch a bullet, see, and you can notice the blood splatters do fade away because we don't want them hanging around for too long. But check that out. Pretty, pretty cool. It's actually rather simple. What I've done is, it's just a simple collision check, but one thing that I have put into play here is that it detects whether the bullet created was created by an enemy or by an ally or by me for example because we don't want my own bullets damaging me I mean that's really strange um, because it just depends how we create bullets. Now, I don't have any shooting for my character right now but with the code I'm going to show you basically it means that if you're shooting and for some reason you end up colliding with your own bullets it's not gonna just destroy the bullet before it travels and, and you know do damage on you so let's jump straight into the code and I can show you how you can make this awesome effect come about whenever you get hit by an enemy bullet let's go so here we are within the project that we will be building this blood splatter effect onto I've got a blood splatter sprite right over here now do notice that I've just got one if you want to have multiple blood splatters go for it you can import them all and then create them as different sub images but be sure that the blood kind of looks very similar, otherwise you're going to see how strange they look. So what I've rather opted for is one image, and what I'm going to do is, whenever we create it, I'm just going to give it a random rotation, so it kind of looks slightly different, just uh, off the bat there. Okay, so there we go, that's what it is. And another thing that we're going to do is, because we're going to be handling collisions, I'm going to go into my sprite player over here, and here's collision checking. So you can do precise, and then it'll mean that if it touches anything over here, or any of this player, it'll do something. But you can also go modify mask, and then see, this is precise, see? It has detected where our sprite is, and it's outlined the whole lot. Do note that precise collision checking um, requires a little bit more processing power to work out. So basically, what you can also do is go down here to shapes, and check you can select ellipses and diamonds and all kinds of stuff here, and then you can just change them however you want. Full image, manual. You can draw one just like that. So, I mean, if I can draw this. If I wanted just his body to get hit, I could do something like that. And uh, in that way, his arms don't count. So, if a bullet hits his arms, it'll just go right through. So, basically, I'm going to go automatic on the bounding box and I'm going to say precise just for now because I don't have a lot of things happening. So, I don't really have to worry about precise collision checking. So when you do this for yourself, do a little research, try the different kinds of collision checking until you find one that you're comfortable with that makes the player feel attached to the object that he controls. So okay, we've got precise, we're going to say okay, there it is, it's all good, okay to that, we've got our blood splatter, nothing fancy on there. Okay, we're going to go into objects, now what I'm going to do is create an actual object for this. Let's splatter, give it that sprite. Now, similar to what we did with shell casings where we gave it a lifespan, I'm going to do the same with the blood. We don't want these objects hanging around, but at the same time, we don't want them to disappear too quickly and take away from this layer of immersion. So I'm going to add a create. And firstly, we wanted to have a random image angle. I random 360 degrees, so it's going to be a whole number between 0 and 360, right over there. Okay. Then we're going to have a step event to handle the lifespan. So it's going to decrease by 0 0.002 every step. And here, if image alpha is less than equal to 0, we're going to tell it to destroy itself. Just like that. See? Pretty simple. So it's not going to hang around. You can fiddle with this number, uh, make it more or less. The higher it is, the faster it will disappear. The lower it is, add another zero, it'll disappear even slower. So yeah, again, experiment. Okay, so that's actually done. That's all the blood splatter needs to do. 
Uh, another thing you can just put it below everything, so let's give it like a two, depth two, doesn't matter. As long as it's not a negative number, it's going to be below our player. Okay. So now we're going to go into object player, and we're going to add a collision event. Notice that this player doesn't have anything, he doesn't shoot, basically he just moves around and rotates towards the mouse, because it's not really about him, it's just about him getting hit at this point. So to keep things simple, I've just removed all that code. So here we're going to say collision with object bullet, okay, we're going to drag in some code, I love code, over here, and this is where the fun part comes in. Now, in GameMaker, if you use the keyword other, it refers to anything that's interacting with the instance that we are in. So in this case, other, because we are in a collision event, in this scope, other means the bullet, the thing that we are colliding with. So ultimately what I'm going to do here is have an if statement, say if other dot owner is not equal to ID. Now ID is the instance specific ID of this creation. So in this case, object player has an ID. This bullet has an ID. This is his ID. Now, another bullet that is created will have a different ID to this object bullet. Do notice that. Every instance in your game world that is an object has its individual ID, even if it's of the same type. So here we're saying, if the owner doesn't have the same ID as me, right? so if the bullet has a variable called owner, which we're going to set to the ID of whoever's shooting it, and if that ID is not the same as us, so if we're not shooting this bullet, then we can do stuff. So in this case, we're going to say instance create add our person, and we're going to create object blood splatter. So it means we've been hit by an enemy bullet, so create a blood splatter. Then with other, see this is with object bullets, we're going to say instance destroy. One thing to note here is don't do this. You see, the problem with saying with object bullet is this with is changing scope, and if you use it to object bullet, if you if you set the scope to object bullet, it means it's going to be the scope of every single instance of object bullet. In this case, with other, it's only going to be the scope of whatever we're interacting with. So in this specific instance of object bullet with this very specific ID, only this bullet will be destroyed all other bullets will carry on doing whatever they were doing before. Okay, so yeah, if we collide with it based on this event, we check in that the our ID is not the same as that of the owner of the bullet, whoever shot it. And if that is so, create the splatter and then destroy the bullet. Okay. Alright, so now that we've done that, we need to make sure that when this bullet is shot, it is given that owner variable which we're going to set to the ID, the instance specific ID of the instance that's shooting it. So in this case, object mod minigun, step. Okay, we're going to find the code that shoots it, so it's pretty much all this. Over here, we're going to go to bullet ID, that's a local temporary variable that we get in the ID. Dot owner equals ID. So this again is the ID of this specific mob, mob minigun. And we're setting a variable in the bullet called owner to that of this ID. All right. Very, very cool. Save this. And now let's run and see what happens. So here we are in the room. We are testing out the code that we just put together. And oh, boy, these things are just spinning around randomly, going to a random point every five seconds. Oh, there we go. We've been hit. See the blood splatter popping up nicely. Uh, you can see they are randomizing their image angle. So that's pretty cool. So because I'm using one blood splatter uh, image, uh, they, they work nicely together. You can see it's, it's somewhat giving me the idea that this blood's from the same character. You know, the shades are the same. It kind of has that whole lighting. So that's really cool. So that pretty much wraps up blood splatter. It's a really, really simple effect. But as I've said, you're going to have to play around with it and mess around with how long you want it to stay around. Maybe if you want to add sub-images of different blood splatters, it's all up to you. So I hope you found this quick tutorial educational and helpful. Please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe for more of the very best game makers tutorials. You can find more of my stuff on my channel. If you have any questions, leave me a comment or send me a PM or something like that, and I can help you out. If you like this tutorial as well as many of my other ones that I have on display, please feel free to check out my Patreon campaign. If you're feeling generous, you can donate a couple bucks. and It'll help me out quite a bit. If you have any suggestions for future tutorials, there we go. Send me a message too. We can try them out. Make it happen.
Uh, if you want a quick glimpse into what it is I do during the day or whatever, please feel free to follow me on various social media platforms. You've got your Google+, Plus, you've got your Facebook, you've got your Twitter. Heck, you can even follow me on Instagram. All those links are in the description as well as on the banner across the screen. So that's really cool. Coming up next time, definitely that slow motor scroll, which we're going to be taking this blood splatter. We're going to do the these turrets are going to be in there too. So that's going to be fun. You're going to see them shed lead as well as their shell casings. In slow mo, it's gonna be like the Matrix. We're gonna have bullet time. If you don't know what bullet time is, go look on Wikipedia about bullet time. We're gonna be adding that also. So until then, happy coding, and I will see you guys next time for another great game of control. Wow, this blood splatter effect is amazing. Cheers for now.